I will bless the Lord at all times. And your praise shall continue. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, Miss Roberta Marshall. I know that you all are excited to hear uh, one of our very own ministers this morning, Minister Chuck Beard, who is going to break the bread of life to us this morning. Good morning, Miss Alfreda. Good morning, good morning, Minister Joe. Thank you all. Thank you all for being prompt and on time for the word of the Lord. Just want you all to know that we do. Uh, we miss you. Good morning, Mr. Gary Howard. IPC is in the house. Good morning, Miss Kalia. Kalia, sorry. Good morning, good morning. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Good morning, Tasha. Praise God. I'm excited this morning because, um, uh, good morning, Tab. Good morning, Miss Sarah Good morning, Miss Jennifer. Good morning, IPC. Okay. Uh, we have one of our very own ministers this morning. He actually taught Bible study Wednesday, uh, Minister Chuck Beard. You all already know that he is capable and that he is willing. Good morning, Renee. Uh, and I am so excited to, uh, to have him here uh, with me this morning to help share this burden and to share uh, this load that God has placed upon us as a church family. I uh, also want to thank you all for being consistent. Good morning, Miss Ardelia. Uh, thank you all for being consistent, uh, showing up for church until we can get back in the building. Uh, but I think that we've learned enough and that we understand that um, church is not limited uh, to four walls. We are the church and, um, and we will continue to be the local ecclesia even beyond church walls. So uh, we thank God for his mercy this morning. We thank him for his grace. Uh, we know that his mercies are new every single morning. Uh, he woke all of us up this morning. If you are logged into this live this morning and if you can hear my voice, uh, God has been good to you despite what you've been through, despite what you're in. You know, uh, God has still been good to you because you have breath. Uh, you have your blood running warm in your vein this morning. And because you are still alive, that means that there's still help and there's still hope for you. Uh, so we thank God for his son, Jesus. Uh, who went up that hill called Golgotha and gave his life for us. With the, the scripture says, without the shedding of his blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. And so I want you all to understand this morning before I turn this over to Minister Chuck Beard, that you are forgiven. The Bible says that if you, if you confess your sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I'm praying this morning that he will create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then I'm going to turn this over to Minister Chuck Beard, and he's going to take us to the throne of grace. Father, we thank you this morning for waking us up. We thank you for touching us with your finger of love. We thank you for covering us in the blood of your son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we are on top of the ground, and the ground is not on top of us. We thank you for giving us another chance to make it right. We thank you, God, for just covering us in your mercy and your grace, God. We thank you for keeping us when we didn't even feel like we were able to be kept. We thank you for giving us another chance to move forward in our purpose and in your will. We come today asking for forgiveness of sin and that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness and create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, God. We pray that you will continue to break chains in our families, God. We, we, we pray that you will continue to break strongholds. We pray, God, that you would just allow us to elevate in what you called us to do and that we would move forward in the spirit of boldness for you have not given us a spirit of fear but a power love and a sound mind 
I pray, God, that you would renew somebody's mind this morning. Somebody probably had a rough night, God. Somebody probably woke up on the wrong side of the bed. But I pray, God, that you would remind them that if you be for us, Lord, that you are more than the world against us. We pray right now that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that somebody gets their word today, that somebody will get their release today, that somebody will come into that intimate, personal relationship with you. We pray that somebody say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? We pray that somebody, somebody's body is healed because we understand that it is by your stripes that we are healed today. And so we worship you, God. We give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. We pray, God, for the man of God who's going to sit in this seat and bring your people the word of life. We pray, God, that you would touch him, that you would touch his family, that you would touch his wife, that you would touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God. I pray that when he opens his mouth, God, that your glory would just come forth and that people's lives will be changed because he accepted his calling and he was obedient to be where you told him to be. We thank you for his heart posture. We thank you that he is in position and we also thank you that he is ready and willing to sit here and to give your people what thus says the Lord. We love you. We give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory for all you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. For we ask this in the mighty and the matchless name of the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. And that name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on, man of God. Amen. Amen. Let's get it. Oh, praise God. Good morning, everybody. Um, I really thank y'all for tuning in. I thank y'all for uh you, for your support. Thank I've you, had Lord. people calling and praying for me this morning. Thank the intercessors you, prayed for me. Big brother Joe prayed for me. I thank, thank you for your prayers. Thank I thank you, you for your support. I thank you for everything. Even the people uh, like from Wednesday, all the people that said thank you, I appreciate y'all. In a piece, I love y'all. Mm. <laughs> I love y'all more than I can express. Mm. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank before you. I preach. And before I get into it, mm. I got to pray. I know pastor just prayed, but I can't preach without praying. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. let's go. Father, we just thank you thank right you now, Lord. God. Thank we thank you, you for God. this day, this time, this hour, this moment, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for this opportunity, God. Thank we you, thank God. you for allowing us to hear your voice, God. We thank, thank you for saving our souls, God. We thank, thank you, you for a day like today, God. Mm -hmm. I pray right now that lives are changed, that hearts are touched, God. I pray that your spirit go forth, God. Yes, I pray that Lord. you get glory out of everything that happens on today, God. Yes, everything that happens in our lives, God. Thank we you, submit God. to you in this moment, God. Thank we hand it all you. over to you, God. We take our hands off the reins and tell you to come in and take control God. We, we confess right now we need you. We, we need love you, you God and we just ask you to have your way with our lives God. Thank we you, are Jesus. so grateful God for what you have done for us we're so grateful for what's about to happen God mm -hmm. and we just know God that your word says all things are working together for our good God yes, so we thank you for the good that's on the way Father. We thank, thank you. you in the midst of the storm, God. We mm -hmm. thank you in the midst of the turmoil, the hurt, the pain, God. We thank you right now. The, uh, our, it's all working out for our oh, good, God. God. Thank you, Lord. God, right now, I just pray over myself. God, I ask that you take control right now, Touch Father. You Lord. have your way, Father. You speak through me, God. I am your willing vessel, God. I am an empty jar of clay. I ask that you remove Chuck and pour into me with the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, God. Yes, I thank you for the opportunity, God. I thank you for your love, God. I thank you, God, just yes. for allowing me to be here thank and to you. have the gift of life this morning, God. Mm -hmm. God, I just ask that you just have your way, Father. It's in Amen. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Mm. All right, so, and I'm going to try not to beat the table so much because I, I realized when I went back and watched on Wednesday that I was like banging, and that's, that's a habit I have. So, all right, Um, before I start, though, let me just say there's going to be a, a part, there's going to be some parts of this where I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. It's okay if you put the, the stuff in the chat, however... I need you to speak these things out loud. Mm -hmm. Reason why I say that is because when God gave us, or when God created us in his image, he gave us the power to create. And part of that creation is just the way that he created, which is he spoke yes, Lord. and things came into being. So in order for change to start falling, in order for things to drop out of our lives, we're going to have to speak over ourselves. And we're going to practice that in part on this morning. Okay. All right, so 
That's the only disclaimer. I think, I think, yeah, I think so. All right, so um, there are three types of love that every believer must master. Three types of love, and I'm gonna give them to you one by one. Um, we've been taught for a long time um, in Scripture, Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 30. It's where you see Jesus in the synagogue teaching. And the Pharisees and Sadducees come to him and start questioning him, and they're trying to jam him up, right? They're trying to get him to say something that's incorrect. Um, I'm just going to read uh, 34 through 40 right now, and I'll read out the NIV. It says, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with the question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. So, the first type of love that Jesus says that we have to have is he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And Jesus said that every law, every prophecy, every word in scripture is based off the, that kind of love. Every scripture is dealing with how we love God. I'm going to prove it to you in just a second. And in verse number 38, it says that we have to love God. It says that we are supposed to love God with everything that is in us. All our heart, all our soul, and all of our mind. Loving God with all your heart is about your emotions. Even when you're happy, when things are great, when everybody is complimenting you, when you look and smell and feel real good, you should still be glorifying God. On the flip side, when you're hurting, when you're angry, when you're depressed, when things are going on, when you're disappointed, when somebody has gotten on your last nerve, when you were feeling all these negative emotions, you still had a responsibility to display your love towards God. Yes. No matter what emotional state we may be in, your responsibility is to continue displaying your love towards God. Then Jesus said, we are to love God with all of our soul. That speaks to your spirit. Or another way to say it, it's, it's submission. Because the more you love God, the more you desire to subdue your flesh. The more you desire to get control of the flesh and bring it into the submission of God. The, more, the, the less you try and please your flesh, and the more you try and walk in God's commands, right? And then the third thing Jesus said, it says, we're supposed to love God with all of our mind, which is our thoughts. All of our thoughts. Every thought that we think should be one that glorifies and shows love to God. Mm, I don't know if anybody ever said it that way, but every thought you think is supposed to show love and glorify God. What does your thought life look like? Uh, well, I can't see in anybody's head, but, you know. So, now the question becomes, how do we display these loves for God? Like, what does it look like? Like, in, 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 in practicality, what does it look like when we are displaying our love for God? Um, it Just keep it simple. If you're dating a man or a woman, and you want to show them that you're interested, and you want to show them that you love them, you start, number one, at the very least, by spending time with them. Mm. At the very least, you're going to start by spending time with them. So, the, how much time do you spend with God intentionally? On a day-to-day -day basis. I, I'm not just talking about when you're hurting. I'm not talking about when you're crying out. I'm not talking about when you need God to come see about you right now. I'm talking about on a day-to-day -day basis. How much time do you spend with God? How many hours a week do you spend with God? 
How much time do you spend in the word? How much time do you spend praying? How much time do you spend giving thanks? How much time do you spend praising? How much time do you spend worshiping? If we say we love somebody, our love is intentional. Our time is spent intentionally towards them. If we say we love God, we should intentionally be spending time with God. We set aside two hours, one hour, whatever it is, say, because this is God's time, nobody else can have it. Mm. Mm. And I, I know I get on the church, but we have had it wrong for a long time. We have told people that all we got to do is spend a few minutes out of the week with God and we good. No, what does your prayer life look like? What does your praise life look like? What does your worship life look like? What are your study habits like? We make time for everything under the sun. We plan vacations. We make sure we at our kids' games. We make sure we go traveling. We do, we do whatever. We, go, we at work on time. We can't get to church on time. Mm. How much time do you intentionally spend with God? So, I'm just going to read um, John chapter uh, 4, start with verse number 19. It says, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Yes. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ and is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. Mm -hmm. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out his commands. Wow. In fact, this is, the, this is love for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. Yeah. So the first part about loving God has to do with the intimate time that we spend with him. But the second part about loving God is how we love his creation. How we deal with his people. Well, not just his people, because all of us were created by God. How do we deal with people? God says, if you love me, you will love my creation, my people. Not just the saved, but the people that were created by God. And I know I touched on the first two types of love. So we got to love God. We got to love one another. But the third type of love is the one that I really want to get into because I feel like there's a disconnect with what we have been taught in the church and what's in the Bible and what's really going on. Right, and what people are really dealing with because the third love it says here, I'm gonna read the verse says, and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself, or love your neighbor as yourself. So basically, we got to love our neighbor, but we also got to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. What does loving you look like? Mm -hmm. you ever, has anybody ever asked that question? Like, if you got a significant other. What does loving you look like? What, is, what, kind, what do you need from me so I can love you better? How often have you asked yourself that question? What do I need to do to love myself better? Wow, come on, man. Mm. There's all kind of books about self-help. There's psychiatrists, there's psychologists, there are counselors. There are all kind of resources all in the world that, that, that tell us Supposedly how to love ourselves, but the problem is that we aren't being taught how to love ourselves from the church We are not going to the source of love in the house that should be for his love to learn how to love ourselves We've had it wrong for a long time Because of this we start seeing mental illness rise, especially in our community We're starting to see people hurting themselves we starting to see mental breakdowns. We started to see suicides increase. And I'm going to tell you, tell you this story. I have a friend who, um, I have a friend, she had four children. 
and um, it was back in the spring. She, uh, they were all at the at the house. They were just relaxing, watching TV, doing whatever, right? She said that she was sitting on the couch, and one of her sons got up, went to the bedroom, put a gun in his mouth, blew his brains out. I said that because like I see what she went through and I know he was having issues with mental illness as well and we got to start saying that mental illness is real especially in our community mm-hmm. and we as a community can't just keep acting like it's okay we can't just keep acting like you know we can sweep it under the rug and start su- start s- keep on suppressing so much stuff because it's been scientifically proven that the, the deep embedded trauma that we go through gets passed down from generation to generation. So, the stuff that you have been through, you can also pass down to your kids. And believe it or not, our children are the ones that suffer the most. They're the ones that are faced with the stuff that we haven't deal with, dealt with about ourselves. The things that we are suppressing, the lack of attention, lack of affection, the children have to deal with us working two and three jobs and then just want to be left alone when we get home. So we can sit on the couch, watch TV, play on our phones, throw, scroll through Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. Or because we are still trying to live out our youth, a lot of, in a lot of households, the children take the back seat to what the parents want to do. And I hate to say it, Y'all can shoot me later for this, but some of us even resent our children because they know, because we know that they are a product of us being young and dumb Mm -hmm. and making poor choices. (laughs) Mm. Now, back to back to what I was saying. I said all that because we, the adults, the parents, the leaders, and the examples. We're supposed to be examples for the next generation. And we have fallen short, me included. Mm -hmm. So now our kids are paying the price because we didn't take the time to learn how to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Because a lot of us didn't learn how to love ourselves until we were 40, 50, 60, some maybe even 70 years old. And then just learning learning now what loving yourself looks like. So the question is, how do we love ourselves? How do we teach the younger generation how to love themselves? And I normally don't teach out the Message Bible, but I'm going to read you a passage from the Message Bible, and then we're really going to get into it, okay? Um, and I like the way that it reads. It's Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. So it's Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, By this time... The crowd, unwieldy and stepping on each other's toes, numbered in the thousands. But Jesus' primary concern was his disciples. He said to them, please listen carefully. He said, watch yourselves carefully so you don't get contaminated with Pharisee yeast, Pharisee phoniness. You can't keep your true self hidden forever. Before long, you'll be exposed. You can't hide behind a religious mask forever. Sooner or later, the mask will slip and your true face will be known. You can't whisper one thing in private and preach the opposite in public. Mm. The days are coming when those whispers will, will be repeated all over time. Wow. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I'm tired. I'm tired of wearing a mask. I'm tired of wearing all these masks. I'm tired of dealing with people that are wearing masks. I I hope and I pray that we can get to the point where we can just be ourselves. I can just be me and be accepted for who I really am. Because this mask that I got to put on when I go to work, this mask when I got to put on when I'm out in public and people see me and know I'm a minister, this mask that I got to put on, it's burdensome. It's uncomfortable. I'm tired of it. It's it's hot. And we as the church have survived behind this mask for too long. Come on, man. We have shown the world one thing, but done another behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. We have said one thing, and behind closed doors, we've done something totally opposite. 
We have proclaimed and shouted and talked about the power and the authority of God, about the faith we had, about all the promises of God. But in reality, we doubt the words that even come out of our own mouth. Mm. We doubt what's actually in the Bible when it comes to us. Then we wonder why people don't want to come to church. We wonder why our kids don't want to come to church. We wonder why our church is dying. We got to take the mask off, y'all. We got to start being real. We got to start being honest about who we really are, what we really are, what we're really going through. For our, for our own mental health, we have to get to the place where we can be real with each other, especially in these four walls, where we confess without judgment to one another. But we can tell the truth. I'm just going to ask this question. Who in the church are you comfortable telling your sins to? The Bible says confess your sins one to another. And I believe that we should. But who in the church are you comfortable telling your sins to? Who are you confident that would not judge you and give you godly counsel? And I ask that question because if you, like, church should be a no judgment zone. And if you feel like you can't go to people in your church, there's something wrong with them people. Right. And there's something wrong with your church. Right. Mm. So once the mask comes off and we're able to be real as a church, as a family, then we're able to start healing. Your kids see the mask. Your kids know who you are at home. Wow. And they see who you become at church. They have witnessed the tears. They have witnessed the cussing. They have witnessed the lack of faith. They have witnessed the weak moments. Just to witness you turn around, put on that mask, and act like nothing is wrong in front of church folk. Mm. We got to set a better example, y'all. We got to set a better example. So number one, we got to take the mask off. And now, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is so y'all can start understanding who we really are, what God has really called us to be. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. It says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. To many of us, or too many of us, I'm sorry, we look in the mirror day after day and we are ashamed of what we see. We look in the mirror and see all the stuff that's wrong with us. We look in the mirror and see all of our flaws. We see all of our faults. We see all of our guilt. We wish we had that 16-year-old body. We wish certain parts were tucked in. We wish certain parts were toned up. We wish certain parts might even get torn out. We don't say, we don't say to ourselves what God says about us. Because when you look in that mirror and you say all that stuff, you're really looking at God's handiwork. God don't make mistakes. You have been created by God just the way you are. And the way you are, you are good enough. Say it to yourself. I am good enough. Mm, I, am good. I am good enough. I am good enough. Mm -hmm. Now in Psalm chapter 139 verses uh, 13 through 16, it says, mm -hmm. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In other words, God took his time. And he crafted you. God took his time. And he put you together on purpose. I looked up that word wonderful. And it means excellent, great, marvelous. 
So God says that you are wonderful because how he made you. God says that you are wonderful because how he crafted you. You are excellent. You are great. You are marvelous. So when you start looking in that mirror and seeing them flaws, say to yourself, I am wonderful. I am excellent. I am great. I am marvelous. When you start having people talk in your ear and tell you what you ain't, I am wonderful. I am excellent. I am great. I am marvelous. When people start trying to get you down, they talk about your outfit. I am wonderful. I am great. I am excellent. I am marvelous. When somebody trying to get you in that depressed frame of mind, I am wonderful. I am great. I am excellent. I am marvelous. Matter of fact, speak that over yourself right now. I am wonderful. I am great. I am excellent. I am marvelous. Speak that over your life. Every time somebody tries to tell you what you are not, what you can't do, what you can't be, I am wonderful. I am great. I am excellent. I am marvelous. The word says that we are each woven together. Y'all know how a quilt is woven together. Each string, every piece of fabric is all put in place. All things that go into putting this quilt together are put there on purpose. So God has put you together on purpose. In verse number 16, it says that you are also ordained, which means that God put you together on purpose with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to kind of sum up that verse, it said, just, you know, make it make sense to me. I had to tell myself, I am wonderfully put together on purpose with a purpose. I am excellently put together on purpose with a purpose. I am greatly put together on purpose with a purpose. I am marvelously, marvelously put together on purpose with a purpose. God didn't make a mistake on you. God did not make a mistake on you. You are wonderful. You are excellent. You are great. You are marvelous. I need you to speak that over yourself every morning before you go to work, every morning before you leave your house. I am wonderful. I am great. I am excellent. I am marvelous. I have a purpose. God put me together on purpose. And to confirm that, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 27 says, For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who will another? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? Meaning that there is nothing in this world or in this universe that can stop what God has ordained. So when God says that you have a purpose, you were put together on purpose, with a purpose, that thing that he made you for, that thing he created you for, the way he created you, the way he made you, it's all there and nobody can stop it. Whatever God ordained you for, they can't touch it. They can't take you away from it. They can't have it. Your purpose is your purpose and nothing can stop you from getting it because God got your back. Mm. There's nothing that, God, that can keep you from what God ordained you to do. There's nothing that can keep you from your God-given purpose. We got to set a better example, y'all. Us as believers have to set a better example for these young people. We got to start walking in what God has called us to, who God has called us to be. We have to start being the men and women that God needs us to be. The world is full of hell. We see that right now. But we got to be godly. We got to be righteous. We got to be walking in all that, that wonderfulness. We got to start walking in all that excellence. We got to start walking in all that greatness. We got to start walking in all that marvelousness. We, you, you bigger than what you, what you think you are. You better than what you think you are. You're better than bigger than what you tell yourself. We got to start declaring over our lives. God created me for this. We got to start being real with each other. We got to take this mask off so we can really start healing, so we can really start being what God called us to be, the men and women that God needs us to be. We got to start being honest with one another because we got to heal and we got to elevate. 
Look, if there's anything that y'all take out of this, I want y'all to just, and I'm, I'm done, but I want y'all to know, number one, you are wonderful. You are excellent. You are great. You are marvelous. I love y'all. Mm. My, my, my. <laughs> hey, we thank God for um, Minister Beard. He has brought the Word of God to the people of God. And I, I tell you, I, I, I have a, I wrote his notes in my <laughs> Bible. Um, it's several things that he said. I don't really think I need to reiterate uh, much of what he said, or if anything at all. But a few things that he did highlight uh, that I'm going to personally apply is one. He says you got to love God. You have to love God first. You have to love him. And your love for God cannot be predicated or based upon somebody else's love for God. That is a decision that you have to make. And when you make that decision, you need to walk and move forward in it. And then secondly, he says, love one another. And this is one of our biggest struggles. We have a hard time loving each other. You know, so, and then lastly, you got to love yourself. And then he just sit here and told all of us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. When God made you, he made you intentionally. He, he woven you together. He was very direct and intentional about how he made you. So to even complain about yourself and the work that God put in uh, to, to make you who you are is a slap in God's face. You know, so he said we need to declare this over our lives daily that I am wonderful, I am excellent, I am great, and I am marvelous. That is something that you have to declare over yourself. You don't have to just be in a church building to do that. Do it in your home. Do it in your car. You get frustrated. You know, uh, commit this to memory so that you can constantly reiterate it. Because this right here will help you remember who you are in God. Uh, so at this time, I do want to once again thank Minister Beard. Thank his family. Thank them for uh, what they contribute to our church family and to the growth of our church. You know, and, and this is something that we've been needing to do. And I'm just excited to have people around me who can sit in this seat and proclaim what thus says the Lord. You know, so uh, I'm grateful uh, thankful, indebted to God for uh, giving us such uh, gifts and blessings around us. Uh, but at this moment, we want to extend an invitation because there may be someone who's watching this live uh, and you may not know God in an intimate, personal way. You may know him through your grandmother. You may know him through a friend. You may know him through uh, somebody else's connection with him. But today we want you to get to know him for yourself. And all you have to do is ask him to come in. Let him know that you want a relationship, a partnership with him. And the scripture says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the scripture teaches us even that when, uh, even when we are unfaithful, that God remains faithful. So it is who he is. The scripture says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And there may be someone watching who think that they're not good enough, uh, that you've done so much bad that, there, that nothing good can come out of you. But I came to tell you today that you are wonderful, you are excellent, you are marvelous, and there's one more. Uh, and, and you are great. You know, you are great. And you can only be that through God. You know, so if you don't know him today, ask him to come in. You know, and to and to change your heart and to change your life. The scripture teaches us once again that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. And so uh, if you if you've done that or if you need assistance uh, with that, all you have to do is just let, inbox us and we will walk you through the process. If you have not added Minister Chuck Beard, please add him as one of your friends. Uh, we look forward to all the other ministers who are going to sit right here in this seat and who's going to uh, bring forth the word of God. You know, so it is just time uh, to put that word out there. We're going to continue to study to show ourselves approved unto God as workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so if you want to uh, give to this ministry, you can uh, text give, you can text um, a cash app 
Inner Peace Church, or you can text GIVE to 423-301-5545, or you can go to our website, which is uh, www.innerpeacechurch.org. And uh, please share this video because I believe that somebody needs to hear this. And some people won't get it unless you share it. So please share this video. Let people know uh, to come to our page and to check this video out. You can also check it out on our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, so once again, uh, thank you all for being who you are and being um, here to hear what God has to say through this uh, platform. Uh, also, uh, we want Inner Peace Church to know that we are still here. We, we haven't gone anywhere. And as soon as uh, CDC and God allows us to get back in this building, we are going to tear this place <laughs> up because we miss one another. We miss the fellowship. Mm -hmm. We miss being together. We miss all the smiles. Yeah. Uh, we just miss, you know, um, we just miss the camaraderie that we have among each other. So and, and it's going to get better. Those of you uh, who are sick, we are praying that God touches you, that God heals you. We pray that it is well uh, with your mental health. He, he alluded to that as well. We must take mental health serious because it is a serious thing and it can also be transferable. And so we need to really keep an eye on that. And if you need help, please do not be ashamed to ask for help. And, and however we can help you, Make sure that you are mentally uh, stable and where you should be. Uh, we will do whatever we have to do to make it happen. You know, so once again, I'm going to uh, close us out with prayer. Thank you to our Instagram family as well. We love you. We love our Facebook family. We love all of our, um, Ch our Chattanooga family. And those of you who are in surrounding areas and our distant church family as well. So let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for what has transpired, what has taken place we know that you are pleased with the word that came forth from your word today. And we ask God for a double portion of your anointing and that you bless the man of God who sat here and preached to your people what thus says the Lord. We thank you for all the people who listened and those who were receptive to the truth because we know that it is the truth that makes us free. Thank you for inner peace. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for our online family as well, God. I pray that you would bless every household that is connected to us, God. I pray that you would bless us mentally, physically, financially, emotionally. Bless us in every aspect of our lives. And we will be careful to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. For those who have come into a new relationship with you, God, we pray that you will cultivate that relationship and that you will partner them with people who love you and people who will guide them and give them godly wisdom. We love you, and as we leave this place and never your presence, we pray that the grace of God and the sweet abiding communion of the Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with each of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. God Amen. bless you all, and we will talk to you all soon.